And yes, if you're wondering, the Prime Minister is Liz Truss. She survived so far. The question is, for how much longer? I don't know if you saw what went on yesterday. I thought, actually, at PMQ, she did a, a, a good job. I thought she was assured. I thought she fought back. I thought she was going to be a shadow of herself. And then, of course, that uh, I thought she survived for another day. And then, of course, Suella Bravham and that bombshell dropped. Then we heard these awful, awful stories. Uh, Chris Bryant uh, actually saying about the manhandling of members of Parliament in the chamber or certainly pushing them into voting lobbies uh, and uh, we heard stories of members of parliament in tears allegedly uh, and uh, really what does this mean for the future of the conservative party is this a party in a death spiral joining me now is tobias elwood mp who is chair of the defense select committee good morning tobias Good morning to you. Really good to see you. Haven't seen you for a very long time. Um, what's your take on, on yesterday? I, my personal feeling is that actually I thought the Prime Minister did look assured. I thought she, she survived PMQs. Yeah, it, it isn't so much about PMQs. It's about the direction of travel of the Conservative Party. Agreed. And the fact is that the current uh, glide path that we're on is not a good one. And the, the nation can see this. And uh, if we continue in this way, unraveling very, very publicly in this way with this blue on blue, then we not only lose the prospect of potentially winning the next general election, but even retaining a sizable uh, uh, opposition uh, size. And uh, we need to reflect on that. The British people are watching this day by day. In fact, it is being uh, viewed across the world, I think, uh, in complete dismay. For me, we need to focus on one thing, and that's showing collective discipline to allow the Chancellor to complete his economic update. We're taking a new fiscal direction. The markets and indeed the British people are waiting to hear what's going to happen with energy bills, what's going to happen with pensions and benefits, what's going to happen to mortgages, what's going to happen to tackle the rate of inflation. All these important things about sorting out the economy, that should be our priority. But I, so I say to colleagues, please, let's, let's stop the public uh, battles. Park that. Absolutely, if you want to, submit your letter to Graham Brady and the 1922 Committee. But let Jeremy Hunt complete his task. But I would also say to the Prime Minister, if I may, mm. that she needs to honestly address the question of our continued leadership uh, with the 1922 Committee and indeed the Cabinet. But after that fiscal statement uh, is complete. So but this would move the, the debate into a, a behind closed doors and, and allow us to grip the situation and have a an agenda that we can all agree. But, but you see, that's my problem, because, of course, you gave the Tory party members two candidates. They decided Liz Truss was the right one. She campaigned on that mini fiscal event. Basically, she set up. We knew her policies. They voted for her. And now it seems to many Conservative members, and I've had many of them saying they're ripping up their Conservative membership cards, because essentially they feel their votes don't count. And the great and the good of the Tory party have decided they don't want Liz Truss and they want someone else instead. And they're not happy. I understand that, and it is a sensitive issue. It was William Hague that actually gave the membership the, the power to choose the final two. He is now saying that that system should be changed. It should be members of parliament that should have the so, final so decision. So hang on a minute. You think, you think Conservative members shouldn't have a say in who the leader of that party is now? Not when we're in government. I'm afraid that the questions that, and, and the direction of travel that our membership seek and the scrutiny that, that is provided by the membership, as we saw, means that promises are made to that uh, slice of the electorate, if you like, which would never survive contact with reality. And we saw that. But, that aren't, you you, actually, but aren't you in, there at the bequest of those people who vote for you? They vote for you because, uh, and, and basically they are your paymasters because they vote for you because they believe you are right. And now you're saying that actually you don't think they make the right decisions and you're cutting them out. Well, they are now saying themselves that we're, they're not happy with this decision of where we're going. But that's a different matter as to who our paymasters are, as you use that phrase. It's the British people. It's the constituencies that we represent. It's wanting to win the next general election. And you don't do that by simply answering the questions and answers and the direction of travel from only a very small slice of that electorate. It would the same apply to Labour as well. MPs are elected and have an understanding of what's required to win the next general election. And what we see, I'm afraid, is wings of our party taking advantage of the election process simply because it went through our membership. That's why it needs to return to members of parliament who actually then, as a caucus, represent all wings of our party, the broad church approach. We saw Liz Truss come in 
giving hardly any jobs whatsoever to the Rishi Sunak side. That was another mistake that was made. We're doing a massive course I mean, correction right now, a huge reset. You, you, clearly, make, you, make, very... you make great points there. And, you know, there's that great adage, isn't it? Keep your friends close and your enemies closer still. And I do I, I do agree. She, she didn't actually unite the party by what she did. But you see many of our viewers and listeners are saying the same thing. Pam Sprecker says, uh, Elwood is deluded. The Tories have lost it. And the only thing they can blame is themselves. And many people are saying the same thing. The Tory party, we know that. You and I both know. The, and I was a Conservative uh, PPC a long time ago. We know the Conservative party, the one thing they're brilliant at uh, is destroying themselves. Yeah, they're also very good at being ruthless and uh, when, and resolute when required, and then reinventing themselves as well. A huge mistake was made in this untested economic plan that was actually put out with uncosted tax cuts. It should never have happened, and it wouldn't have happened had that manifesto been scrutinised by members of parliament rather than the membership itself. If, our, if we're in opposition, then absolutely we can include the membership. We have the luxury of time to digest and understand. But when you're thinking about the next general election and we're behind in the polls, then we need to be thinking about what we should be doing to focus on that. And let's not forget that what has been agreed, not just by the membership, but indeed by the nation, is the 2019 manifesto. And I'm afraid we've veered a long way away from that. That should be our anchor. That's what unites the entirety of our party, whether you be one nation or indeed the ERG. Yeah, I mean, you make a very strong point and you make it well. Let me ask you the question that I'm asking people at home this morning, which is if, if the Tory party dumps Liz Truss, and I, I think it will, and I think you think they will, um, and they install a new Prime Minister, do you think really the government has a, a mandate to continue? Or do you think actually it would be good? OK, say, right, we'll call a general election. So I understand this clarion call for a general election, but our system is not presidential. You don't elect directly a prime minister, you elect a government. That is what it is. It's then for the internal machine to decide who the prime minister will be. Now, I don't say that this doesn't look ugly. This is unprecedented and we should never be here. The point is that we are and we have to solve it. And you solve it through leadership and determination. And right now, the trajectory is very, very grim indeed. I go back to my point. Every single one of my colleagues needs to focus on allowing Jeremy Hunt to land the economic plan. Let the nation see where we're going to go. Let the market settle. If we do go into having this massive bun fight about a leadership, the markets will be spooked again. There'll be a run on the pound and it probably will trigger uh, ungovernance and that will cause a general election now. Can I just read some of these messages? I'm being inundated by messages. Uh, Elwood showing his disdain for party members. What a surprise and showing it's all about being in power, not the That's good of ridiculous. the... That's ridiculous. Well, ridiculous. Let comment. me just finish. Let me just, Tobias, Tobias, comment. let me just finish. This is what your members are saying. Listening to Elwood, he seems more interested in winning the next election, not putting the country right. Typical self-interest. And this one says, I am here sitting with my jaw on the floor. I cannot believe the arrogance of the man. How dare he thinks he knows better than us. These are your members. You are alienating your own voters uh, no there are some of them, my members which have chosen to get in touch with you i can assure you that mps are very much in touch with their own membership and are absolutely flabbergasted of where we've gone i'm afraid i understand people being agitated but agree to disagree you know Indeed. to call me deluded and so forth i mean to get personal that actually shows and illustrates to the nation that we can't agree to disagree we need to be understanding and recognise, look where we are in the polls. Do you Indeed. want to continue on this trajectory or do you want to grip the situation? We win when we show that we are centrists, that we are a moderate party, able to represent the entirety of Britain. When we go to a wing, which I'm afraid will not you know, be liked by, your mem by people who uh, listen to your programme, uh, then I'm afraid we lose. In our history, whether it be... Disraeli, Baldwin, uh, Churchill, Macmillan, even Thatcher. She had, what, uh, Ken Clark and Heather on one side, and then Norman Tebbett and uh, uh, Nigel Lawson on the other. When you bring the talent of the party together, that's when we win. We've not done that here. We're doing a fiscal course correction. Let's land that. Then let's look at the focus of the leadership party. That is a plan. Tobias, always good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for coming on this morning. That's Tobias Elwood, Chair of the Defence Select Committee.